This is Shrimad Bhagavatam, Canto 6, Chapter 3. We have texts 2, 3, and 4. Text 2 is Yamasya Devasina Danda Bhangaha Kutashchana Rishe Shutpapurva Asit Etan Mune Vrishchiti Lok Samshayam Nahitwad Anya Itime Vinishchitam. Here, <clears throat> this verse doesn't have a purpose. Read the next two verses. Oh, great sage, never before has been, been heard anywhere that an order from Yamaraj has been baffled. Therefore, I think that people will have doubts about this, that no one but you can eradicate. Since that is my firm conviction, kindly explain the reasons for these events. Sri Shuka Vacha, Bhagavad Purusha Rajan, Yamya Pratihoto Dhyamaha, Patim Vigyapaya Masur, Yamam Samyamani Patim. Shishukadava Swami replied, My dear king, when the order carriers of Yamaraj were baffled and defeated by the order carriers of Vishnu, they approached their master, the controller of Samyani Puri and master of sinful persons to tell him of this incident. Yamduta Uchuhu, Kati Santi Hashastaro, Kati Santi Hashastaro, Jeeva Lokasya Vai Prabho, Traividhyam Kurvata Karma, Phala Bivyakti Hai Tavaha. So what for translation, Yamadutta Uchu, the order carriers of Yamaraj said, Kati, how many Santi are there here in this world, Shastara, controllers or rulers, Jeeva Lokasya of this material world, Vai indeed, Prabho, O Master, Traividhyam, another three modes of material nature, Kurvataha, performing, Karma, activity, Phala, of the results, Abhivyakti, of the manifestation, Hetavaha, causes. Translation of purport by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta, Swamishtha Prabhupada. Translation. Yamudda said, said, Our dear Lord, how many controllers or rulers are there in this material world? How many causes are responsible for manifesting the various results of activities performed in the three modes of material nature, Satvaguna, Rajaguna, and Tamaguna? Purport, Shri Vishwachakra says, The Yamadutas, the order carriers of Yamaraj, were so disappointed that they asked their master, almost in great anger, whether there were many masters other than him. Furthermore, because the Yamadutas had been defeated and their master could not protect them, they were inclined to say that there was no need to serve such a master. The servant cannot carry out the orders of his master without being defeated. What is the use of serving such a powerless master? Hare Krishna. So, this is one of the most dramatic pastime of Srimad Bhagavatam, where Amajamil on his death sees this conversation between the Yamadutas and the Vishnudutas, and he is saved. And in one sense, you could say the pastime is over, but the Bhagavatam, if you consider it to be like a movie camera, the movie camera now shifts to the place where Yamadutas are going to Yamaraj. It's interesting that the Bhagavatam's camera does not go to Vishnu Dutas going to Vishnu. Although we could say the Bhagavatam is about Vishnu, but it focuses on the Yamadutas going to Vishnu after this incident. And there is a discussion over here. Now the thrust of the Bhagavatam is that how Krishna is supreme and Bhakti to him is supreme. The Krishna Vishnu in one sense are the same. So, through this pastime, many things are being illustrated. Specifically, the point being illustrated is that no matter how many sinful activities somebody has done, the holy name can deliver them. That, that's the potency of bhakti that is being described. But simultaneously, the position of Bhagawan is also being demonstrated. And even Parikshit Maharaj acknowledges the extraordinary nature of this pastime when he says that Normally, the Yamadutas cannot be refuted. That it is. The Yamadutas cannot be refuted. That's as we say that we cannot bribe death. We cannot argue against death. We cannot hide from death. When it comes, it takes us away. Rityu Sharva So he says that the Yamadutas being foiled is something which has never been heard of. And therefore, it's astonishing. And 
in answer to that question, how, how, how did this happen? So in answer to that question, Shukde Goswami now takes the camera to the conversation between Yamadutas and Yamara. So rather than he answering the question, he says, I let the, in English they're saying, to hear from the horse's mouth. That means to hear from the more authority. So Yamaraj himself will address the, the question of his followers. And Yamaraj will say that, oh, you thought you were thinking I am supreme, but actually I am not supreme. I am a servant of Narayan, servant of Lord Vishnu. And that's what will come subsequently. And that is one theme which could be discussed. But let's focus what happens in the Chakra, what, what is Chakravati Path saying is purport that the Yamutas are frustrated because they were carrying out the order of their master and they were thwarted in it. They were thinking, is there any point in serving a master who cannot protect us, who cannot back us up when we are trying to serve the Jipos? So that is the theme I'll focus on in today's class that, you know, how do we serve imperfect masters? In one sense, when we start practicing bhakti, we are serving the supremely perfect master, Krishna. And we can say that if we are not serving Krishna, we are serving in the material world many imperfect masters. And that is true. That's why we should serve Krishna. Kulashekar Maharaj in one of his prayers compares an ordinary landlord or king with the supreme lord. And he gives about six characteristics comparing the ordinary landlord and the supreme lord. And he says, what can that ordinary land, how much does that landlord own? What can that landlord give? How long can that result last? How much fulfillment can it provide? What is the character of the person whom you are serving? And what is the transformation in the heart that is going to happen by serving that person? So these six broad things, you can say they differentiate serving the Supreme Lord as contrasted with serving, a, a serving any other master. So we could go in that direction, but I will not go in that direction at this point. That I'll talk about another direction. That, that even when we decide to serve the Lord, so okay, we were serving material masters and we decided to serve the Lord. But the challenge is that we don't have access to the Lord directly. And when we are serving the Lord, we are serving the Lord through his representatives. And not all the representatives that we are serving may be perfect. Devotees of the Lord are perfect in their intention to serve Krishna. But we may try to do some service very faithfully. And somehow that service doesn't work out. Now, what does that mean? Does it mean that we are not sincere enough? We are not pure enough? Well, that could be one explanation. Another explanation could be that maybe our authority is not pure enough. And that's why the instruction doesn't have the potency. Or maybe it could be that the situation is not just right. Now, if you consider Shila Prabhupada's life, Shila Prabhupada was pure. Uh, his spiritual master was pure. And still for almost 35, 40 years when Prabhupada was preaching in India, he got no result or no significant result. So what does that mean? Sometimes everything may be right. The devotee, the, 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 the devotee may be pure hearted. The authority may be pure, but still the result may not come. So when we are trying to do some surveys and when that service is frustrated, there could be broadly three reasons for that frustration. That is, the instruction itself is wrong. The instrument, the instruction is not exactly wrong. Instruction may not be the right instruction. The, in, the person executing the instruction may not be the right person for that. Or the situation may not be right. Vidura was always very wise and always very compassionate. And yet, his instructions to Dhritarashtra did not land. For a long, long, long time. It is only when Duryodhana was killed and all his sons were killed, then the Dhritarashtra's Dhritarashtra experience, what we can say, he experienced frustration of his plans repeatedly, but only after the killing of his sons did he experience hopeless frustration. And that's when he became ready for spiritual wisdom. So while all these three could be the possibilities, that we are not pure-hearted, that our situation is not, that we are not rightly motivated or rightly competent, 
situation is not right or the instruction that is given to us the person giving the instruction is not right in the sense that there could be many ways they don't understand us properly they're not given the right instruction they themselves uh, don't understand the situation properly they may not be rightly motivated they so there could be various situations so when we try to serve krishna in the world there can be frustration so when such frustration occurs we need to be able to see that properly in fact this is one of the most important we could say devotional skills or abilities to be able to give to be able to see negative events in a positive light negative events in a positive light parikshit maharaj was cursed to die in 7 days now that is horrible event because we could say he was if not blameless it was a very minor mistake and for that to be cursed is a terribly negative event but he saw the negative event in the positive light that is this is a opportunity for me to be disentangled for the world from the world and to focus on krishna when prabhupada experienced repeat it repeated setbacks and failures in his attempts to share krishna bhakti in india he saw those negative events in a positive light every single time his endeavors were not successful what prabhupad prabhupad saw was his conviction to focus on the original instruction of his spiritual master that is speak in the english language sp- share krishna bhakti all over the world prabhupad's focus was let me go to the west that conviction increased every single time he experienced a setback in his outreach in india so to be able to see negative events in positive light that is a characteristic of a devotee now if we start seeing negative events in negative light what that means is that to put it provocatively that means we are functionally being an atheist you see how can a devotee be an atheist a devotee is devoted to the lord so it is the opposite of atheist yes no devotee will philosophically be an atheist no devotee is going to philosophically argue that god does not exist as devotees we may not emotionally also be atheists we may still pray to krishna we may go through the motions of bhakti sometimes when we are in the presence of krishna we may also experience some emotions emotions of pleasure and joy and ecstasy also but if we are seeing negative events in a negative light that means what we are saying is when i think of krishna that's wonderful but krishna has no role in my life right now at this is such a terrible thing that is happening and it's all life is so terrible everything is so terrible people are so terrible so in one sense we can say pessimism is a sign of atheism if we are theistic then we need to be optimistic now prabhupada does say that we should be pessimistic about our prospects for material enjoyment in the world but that does not mean that we are pessimistic all the time if prabhupad had been pessimistic all the time he would not have been able to persist set back after set back after set back in practicing his in sharing krishna bhakti in attempting to share krishna bhakti so how can we be so so as i said this point to be theistic is to be optimistic and to be pessimistic is to be atheistic functionally atheistic not as a philosophically or emotionally but functionally atheistic that means that yes some bad things happen in life and the bad things are said sometimes you know we may get a bad instruction it's not that the instructor is bad but the instruction that we are given may be bad that instruction may not be suitable for us sometimes we may make a make a bad mess of a situation the instruction may not be bad may be good but we make a mess of the situation either because of our carelessness or because we are untrained because we are not really suited for that service or sometimes we might just meet a bad situation sometimes just things are in the world such that we encounter bad situations so it is important for a devotee that there is the circumstantial and there is the transcendent there is a circumstantial vision means okay you know this particular thing got messed up you know i made a mistake or the situation was wrong or maybe the guidance i was given was wrong all three are possible but beyond all this krishna's plan is still working that 
even through our mistakes, even through others' mistakes, Krishna's plan is still working. Tasyanu vihitam rajan. In the first canto of the Srimad Bhagavatam, when Bhishma is instructing Vyasadev, sorry, no, Yudhishthir Maharaj, he says that everything is within the plan of the Lord. It's interesting, Srila Prabhupada translates exactly by these three words. He says, everything is within the plan of the Lord. He doesn't say everything is the plan of the Lord. Now, what is the difference between the two? Everything is the plan and everything is within the plan. See, everything is the plan of the Lord means that the Lord had planned for us to commit mistakes. The Lord had planned that those who are guiding us may, commit it, may have committed some mistakes. No, that is not the Lord's plan. Our mistakes are our mistakes. It is we who misuse our free will, either because of ignorance or because of foolishness. And it is we who commit mistakes. But even after our mistakes, we still stay within the purview of the Lord's plan. The Lord's plan is so, so we could say, resourceful that it can accommodate our mistakes also. And it can accommodate somebody else's mistakes also. So to give an example of this, uh, everything is within the plan of the Lord, even if everything is not the plan of the Lord. An example for this could be, say we are driving to an unknown destination, a destination which is unfamiliar to us, and we are using GPS for that. Now, while we are using GPS, GPS tells us, turn right, and then we turn left. Now, turning left is not the plan of the GPS for us. But even if we turn left, we are still within the plan of the GPS. The GPS is not going to say, you didn't obey me, you disobeyed me, get lost. I'm no longer going to guide you. No. The GPS will immediately reroute and tell us, okay, now you go in this direction. So, so whichever route we take, no matter how many wrong turns we take, we are still within the plan of the GPS. So similarly, whether it, no matter, even if we commit mistakes, still we are within the plan of the GPS. And you know, the GPS is giving some guidance and we're not so sure about it. So we ask somebody else and they say, go left. And actually that's wrong. So somebody else may guide us wrong. But even then, we are still within the plan of the GPS. Of course, every wrong choice has a consequence. And if we take a wrong turn, it will take us that much longer to get to the destination. So it is not that the mistakes are, mistakes are inconsequential. The mistakes are consequential. But no mistake is fatal. No mistake is going to end our spiritual life. No mistake is going to end our relationship with Krishna. No mistake is going to lead to, the, to our rejection by Krishna. No, rather, no mistake is going to lead Krishna to reject us. We may reject Krishna, but Krishna will never reject us. So now, how do we see this over here? That <clears throat> the idea that we may commit a mistake and still we are within Krishna's plan. This can actually be very solacing and encouraging for us. This of course does not mean that we just we irresponsibly or thoughtlessly commit mistakes because as I said, mistakes have consequences. But the key point is that Krishna's plan is bigger than our mistakes. And similarly, Krishna's plan is bigger than other people's mistakes also. So, I'll take two examples to illustrate this, and I'll come to uh, our practical level of dealing, and then we'll uh, have some conclusion and discuss some questions. See, when Krishna goes as Shanti Dut to, uh, to Hastinapur, at that time, he at one level fails. He goes to seek peace and he fails. Now, do you say, can God fail? God is omnipotent. One of the names of Vishnu in the Vishnu Sahasrana is Satya Sankalpa. In general, that is the name of him glorifying in the Bhakti literature also. His Sankalpa, his intention is never thwarted. And yet he went as a peace messenger and he failed. 
So how can God's plan fail? So actually, his plan didn't fail. fail because his plan, his actual plan, was different from his apparent plan. The night before Krishna was to appear in the Kuru assembly to present the peace proposal, that night he was staying at the house of Vidura. And Vidura told Krishna, Krishna, why have you come here? You know that Duryodhana is not going to listen to you. Duryodhana is so obstinate, so intransigent, so impudent that he's going to dismiss your peace proposal. And Vidura had another mortal fear in his heart. He said, Oh Krishna, I have seen one insult in the Kuru assembly that gives me nightmares till now. The insult of Draupadi when she was dishonored and she was attempted to be disrobed. He says, I can't live with it whenever I think of it. It gives me nightmares. He says, I have heard that Duryodhan is planning to arrest you when you go as a peace messenger. He says, I cannot live if I have to see another insult like that. He says, why are you even going to that assembly? Krishna says to Vidura that, Oh Vidura, I know that Duryodhana is not going to listen. And he will not be able to arrest me. Don't worry. But I am going there to present the peace proposal just so that the world will know that the Pandavas tried everything possible to avoid war. So that the world will not hold the Pandavas responsible for the war. The, Panda, the whole world will know that it is Duryodhana who caused the war to happen. And actually when Duryodhana speaks, that I will not give enough land to put even the tip of a needle through. That might seem like a very impressive dialogue. But through that, that vehement, that arrogant action, those arrogant words, and thereafter through his attempt to arrest Krishna who had come as a peace messenger, the Duryodhan completely played into Krishna's hands. Because what happened is, Duryodhan thought he was defying Krishna, but actually Duryodhan was actually play, playing into Krishna's hands. Krishna's purpose was to show the world Duryodhan's obstinacy. That Duryodhan is the cause of the war. So both by his words and by his actions, Duryodhan completely played into Krishna's hands. So in that sense, Krishna's plan was fully successful. It was a, we could say a smashing success. A smashing success. So Krishna's intention is always successful. But what is Krishna's intention? We may not know that. And we may think XYZ is Krishna's intention and that was fine. But no. So it may happen for us that as, uh, the, let's take the Yamaraj example now. See the Yamadutas, we may think of, a, think of as terrible beings. They look ghastly and they, they, when somebody sees Yamadutas, they may get night, nightmares. However, the Yamadutas are faithful servants of Yamaraj. And Yamaraj is a Mahajana. So when the Yamadutas are frustrated in the service of Yamaraj, and they are serving a devotee, a Mahajan. So is that frustration something which is, which is a thwarting of the plan of a devotee? It is Yamaraj who is a devotee who has given them instructions. And they are carrying out the instructions of a devotee ultimately. And Yamaraj also has a vital role in maintaining dharma in the world, order in the world. So we could say Yamadutas are like, like fierce police people who are out to carry apprehend criminals. And they are going on the order of the state. So actually, are, is there frust if they are trying to carry, do dharma, if they are trying to carry out the instructions of a devotee, of a Mahajan, then if they are frustrated, then what is happening? Actually, through that frustration, 
Krishna has some other plan going on. Through their frustration, Krishna is demonstrating the glory of the holy name, the glory of bhakti, and the supremacy of his, of his own position. So, so Krishna's sankalpa will always be satya. But our understanding of his sankalpa may not always be satya. Krishna's intention, Krishna's plan will always be manifesting, will manifest eventually. But what we think is Krishna's plan may not always be Krishna's plan. And that is why as devotees, we need to be able to, said, to see negative reality positively. You say, oh, this was my plan. This plan didn't work. Now, what is the use of serving Krishna? I was trying to serve Krishna. It didn't work. So sometimes it may happen that we may be given some instruction by some senior devotees, you know, do this. Sometimes some devotees may decide that we want to do preaching at a particular place. And we go enthusiastic, we try to do a program and then we invest time and energy. We may invest money, try to start a center over there. And we may get blessings of senior devotees. And still nothing happens over there. I said, what went wrong over there? No, was it? What went wrong? Well, rather than focusing on, you know, was I wrong? Were the devotees who guided me wrong? What was wrong? We focus on that, okay, there is Krishna's plan operating over here even now. Maybe it is that Krishna didn't. Krishna's plan was maybe not that I should serve here and succeed here. Krishna's plan may have been that Maybe I learn some humility, I learn some detachment, maybe I learn that I am not the doer. Maybe I learn some gain some experience over here by which I can serve somewhere else. And so the idea is that rather than blaming ourselves or blaming our authorities or guides or whoever else, see the Yamadutas, they are angry almost with Yamaraj. But Yamaraj does not take their offense personally. Yamaraj sees it as an opportunity to glorify the Supreme Lord. To glorify the Supreme Lord. We see Srila Prabhupada himself. The Prabhupada was a pure devotee and Prabhupada wanted to share Krishna Bhakti all over the world. But at the same time, it was not that every single plan that Prabhupada made was successful. Sometimes Prabhupada tried certain things and some things worked. Some things worked wonderfully. Some things worked okay. Some things just didn't work at all. And some things really backfired. So let's take us examples of all of these. So Prabhupada wanted devotees to distribute books. And devotees had no idea. They would just go to bookstores and try to distribute books. And it was very difficult. But then devotees got an idea that, you know, we can just hand out books to people and make people give some charity. It incidentally happened. The first book distribution was the devotees were putting fuel in their gas in their van and they didn't have money. So they said the gas tank person, the fuel, the gas station person said, we have this book, who do you like a book? I said, this is a big fat book. This is more than, he thought this is more than what the bill for the gas would be. He said, I'll take it. Hey, they said, this is a good idea. Let's try this. And that's how books started. So Prabhupada's desire to distribute books was there. And now, mil not just millions, but billions of books have been distributed. That's an example of something which is spectacularly successful. Some other things that Srila Prabhupada tried. Some of them were successful, but not immediately. When Prabhupada came to India, Prabhupada brought his Western followers to India. And at that time, it was sensational for Indians to see Western people practicing bhakti. But somehow at that time, not many Indians became committed bhakti practitioners. Not many Indians became disciples of Srila Prabhupada. Many people became life members, many became, became appreciators, but not committed followers. So what was going on? Prabhupada was personally investing his time and energy. Prabhupada had his dedicated disciples assisting him. But at that time, the time was not right. Things changed. Uh, and from the 80s onward, and especially in the 90s, the movement expanded. Now we could go into socio-political, socio-economic fact analysis of India to see what happened. But what happened was in those times, it was more of a cultural pride for Indians. Our culture is so great that, that these Americans and these Europeans are also practicing. That's great our culture is. But they, they thought we are already practicing it. We don't need to learn anything more from it. But one generation later, many of the Indians were somewhat estranged from their culture. 
and they grew up in their culture but when they were exposed to it again in the sense that they saw it being lived being practiced being taught rationally philosophically practically they were attracted to it so the seed that prabhupad planted they have born phenomenal fruit now now in india the outreach is so is so much where wherever we go there are so many centers coming so many devotees in the center so hundreds and thousands of devotees are there so so the results came after some time they may not come immediately they come after some time so is it that the devotees who were in india are trying so hard during prabhupad's times was it that they were not pure hearted was it that prabhupad was not pure no it was just the time was not right so as devotee the devotees remained optimistic the devotees remained kept serving and of course they kept learning they kept strategizing and gradually they learned how best to share krishna bhakti and they've been phenomenally effective now we can consider shri prabhupa started the shrimad bhagavatam that he considered that his life's magnum opus but somehow he was not able to complete it so actually that's the external vision shri prabhupa did not complete it but in one sense what shri prabhupa did was that he completed it through his followers and when shri prabhupa was asked uh, during his last moments that you know what do you have any remaining desires prabhupa said kuch ichcha nahi so prabhupa could have said you know oh, you know i have not completed my bhagavatam it is it is a spiritual desire but prabhupa demonstrated that That, that level of detachment also detachment even from a service which is dear for his heart that's what not krishna wanted prabhupada didn't have any discontent in his heart mm-hmm. and while prabhupada was doing his service sometimes when we read the bhagavatam we feel the purports are so big mm-hmm. as some one page purport some two page purport some three page purports we may get tired reading the purports but you know i am an author and i try to read so i write some books so writing is lab- laborious certainly writing is 100 times more laborious than reading if prabhupad had been simply concerned with meeting the goal of completing the 12 cantos prabhupad could have given short 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 purports and he could have completed it all but prabhupad was compassionately concerned with giving the message not meeting a target that was prabhupad's compassion he was meeting he was giving the message that okay with each which verse what prabhupad considered essential for us to understand and know he gave that and that in one sense was that entire plan not successful well it was successful but in a different way as prabhupad said about his spiritual master and it is said about his disciple the spiritual master lives on through his disciples through 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 the successors the followers so that's how prabhupad's legacy goes on and there are areas in life where sometimes devotees tried some things and some things went uh, wrong sometimes terribly wrong sometimes devotees went to particular places for outreach they tried to do certain things and those things didn't work out but through it all you know we could blame this person that person say for example uh, the devotee started gurukuls and unfortunately some of the gurukuls some things happened which were not just regrettable but also reprehensible at times but the important thing is that while this happened and this needs to be corrected but we need to know that even through it all krishna's plan is still operating we say what is krishna's plan when somebody is subjected to some some terrible experiences while they are supposedly practicing they are supposed to be in a devotional center when you so the idea is that oh what krishna's plan is and how krishna will purify us that we don't know now if we start asking this question you know what did someone deserve to get a particular thing then you know we can look at the pandavas they are pure devotees they are in fact eternal associates of the lord so what did draupadi do to suffer the indignity of being dishonored lord ram is himself the supreme lord what did he do to deserve being exiled what did he do to deserve having his 
his consort abducted from him what did sita do to deserve herself being abducted from her, her, to herself being abducted by rahul so even if she said she stepped out of lakshman rika it's a very small mistake and to get such a terrible terrible punishment for that it doesn't seem fair so the whole point if our of our literature if we see is that we focus not on the fairness of life but on the mercifulness of the lord not on the fairness of life if you start looking at the fairness of life well the fact is life is not fair at least from this life's perspective there are many things that go wrong but the lord is always merciful so the bhagavatam does not address the question of karma directly like why do bad things happen to good people the bhagavatam's focus is not that when bhishma speaks to yudhishthir you know, bhishma could have asked oh, i was dutiful i took a vow of celibacy and i stuck to that vow throughout my life and yet what is my plight i am lying on a bed of arrows being pierced unbearably but instead the first thing that bhishma does is he says aho kashtam aho anyayam yad yuyam dharmanandana imagine we go to some meet some devotee who is terminally sick and is in extreme pain and that devotee says the first thing to us oh, how much how many problems you are facing in your life say what that's what he is thinking and so what the bhagavatam does is that it rephrases the question not why bad things happen to good people but when bad things happen to good people what do good people do when bad things happen to good people what do good people do so when we have that that question as our driving question we will be able to find a way ahead we will be able to face whatever difficulties come whether it could be because of our situation because of our mistakes because of we being misguided whatever happens so the so the yamadutas we may not think of them as good people we may think of them as bad people but they're not actually bad people they have they have fearsome appearances but they are also a part of the cosmic order and what happened over here is that they are able to learn a higher truth which they did not know so what did they do they went to yamaraj and asked him and they got clarification from him so i'll conclude with my last example that if you consider the pandavas draupadi was a faithful wife to the pandavas and yet what happened was yudhishthir gambled everything away and then finally gam- staked her on gambling and lost her. and eventually they were exiled and draupadi was furious and in the mahabharat there is a whole chapter on yudhishthir's moral instructions and draupadi lashes draupadi is actually very angry she is lashing out at destiny she is lashing out at yudhishthir and at that time in one sense we may say yudhishthir is the least qualified to instruct her because yudhishthir got her into that trouble it is yudhishthir who is responsible for it all and yudhishthir at one level is humble enough to acknowledge that i got carried away by the gambling fever he said he, he said that because it had been vidura asking asking me to come and dhritarashtra wanting me to fight so i gambled so my gambling was not the wrong thing i was only following an instruction but the extent to which i gambled was excessive just like when bharat maharaj saved the deer saving the deer was not wrong but taking the responsibility to take care of the deer for the rest of life and and then getting consumed by that see it is good intentions are not the problem but sometimes good intentions can blind us to good intelligence good intentions can blind us to good intelligence that means bharat maharaj what happened is his intention was good his this dear the, the mother has passed away she orphan had i should say and then good intelligence means i have not come here to protect a deer i was protecting the whole kingdom i have renounced that and i come here to focus on the lord 
So the good intentions can sometimes blind good in, good intelligence. So Yudhishthir, his intention was good. He had not gone there to earn money and get a. He was not a part of a get quick rich scheme. Is thinking that yeah, my elders have told me to do this, so I'm doing this. But sometimes, in while having good intentions, there could be they may overshadow our good intelligence. So sometimes we may we may get an instruction from a senior devotee. And then, then, then you may have good intentions. We may have good intentions. But sometimes the situation may not be right. Some circumstances may go wrong. And at that time, if you only focus on the intention and not use our intelligence, then things can go wrong. So we use our intelligence and learn and move forward. So rather than why do bad things happen to good people? We change the question to when bad things happen to good people, what do good people do? What do good people do? If we keep that focus, then we will find a way ahead. Even if things go wrong in our life, we'll find that Krishna will still guide us through those things. That is the meaning of Tate Nu Kampam Susamikshamanu. That Krishna's mercy is still there no matter what situation we face in our life. And if we have that, that, that conviction that Krishna's plan is still there in my life, then we will go through go closer to Krishna. No matter how many difficulties come and from what source those difficulties come. Our mistakes, somebody else's mistakes or just mistaken situations. But we will know that Krishna's plan is not a mistake for us. Krishna's plan is still working and he will draw us towards him. Ultimately. So I'll summarize. I spoke three main points today. First point I spoke was about how when we are doing something and we fail in that situation. So how do we see it? That if that from, from that from functional perspective, it may be because we have made a mistake, you know, those guiding us could have made a mistake, or the situation was just not. So, but if we are only consumed in the so that was the first point, the cause, analyzing the cause. Second point was that if we look at situations only from the functional perspective, then if negative situations make us pessimistic, then we are being functionally atheistic. So as devotees, we need to be able to see negative situations positively by looking beyond the situations to Krishna's plan. So our mistakes are not Krishna's plan, but Krishna's plan can work even through our mistakes. And the last part was several examples of how Krishna's plan always works, but Krishna's plan may be different from what we think is Krishna's plan. So Krishna's plan to petition for peace failed, but Krishna's plan to demonstrate who was the cause of war was spectacularly successful. Similarly, Prabhupada's plan to translate the Bhagavatam at one level failed, but that the fact that the Bhagavatam was translated by his followers showed that his legacy lived on. Prabhupada didn't get immediate success in India, but when the eventual success came, it was stupendous. The legacy lives on. So for all of us also, Rather than fixating on either beating ourselves up or blaming others when things go wrong, we try to see when bad things happen to good people, not why bad things happen, but rather than focusing on life's unfairness, we focus on Krishna's mercifulness. And what do good people do when bad things happen to them? So we don't claim that I had good intentions, why did bad, bad thing happen to me? We make sure that our good intentions don't overshadow our good intelligence. And when we move forward in that way, knowing that Krishna's plan is always working, we will find a way ahead, even through the most frustrating of situations. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna. Are there any questions or comments? Hare Krishna Prabhu. Dhanva Pranam to you. All glories to Srila Prabhu. You're in a beautiful class, Prabhu. Thank you for summarizing. That was my job. <laughs> you did it. <laughs> Thank you, Prabhu. Just a beautiful class, Prabhu. So amazing. Uh, certainly, um, Krishna's plan, we cannot understand. And uh, especially we are bewildered when the plans go opposite. We all know that. Otherwise, we are happy that uh, Krishna and Prabhupada is listening to us. But uh, it's a big movie of a few millions of lifetimes. And we just see a small clip of it. And we are a little bewildered, especially when it's uh, it's not going good. Beautiful examples you gave from, uh, of course, from Srila Prabhupada you gave, and then Bharat Maharaj, and then Dishthir's examples, so beautiful. And also, I see 
Uh, this all starts with Parikshit Maharaj getting a curse. So, but how he reacted to it was uh, so so beautiful. So we can certainly learn so much from Shrimad Bhagavatam. And from this episode itself of Ajamila, we should learn that uh, sense the gratification, indulging in it can be very dangerous. So beautiful, beautiful class, Prabhu. Thank you so much again. Uh, Prabhu, uh, can we go to the question answer session? We have a couple of hands already raised. Yes, please. Hare Krishna, Sugha Kara Krishna Prabhu, Dhanu Pranam. Prabhu, you are muted. Yes. Yes, Prabhu. Hare Krishna, Chaitanya Charan Prabhu. This is always a very analytical class and you bring so many points. We always look forward to your class. It's really uh, so much things clarification comes. My question is, now... Is it, is it audible? My voice is audible. Yes, yes, please. Yes, yes Prabhuji, you know, what I'm asking is, uh, the, the material world people always, those who come to the Krishna consciousness, they will say that uh, the, when we joined, we were better off. But after taking Krishna consciousness seriously, we have become so bad, so sad. So I always tell that if the karma is burning, he said, what karma is burning? He is dying, Corona died, what? I didn't say. I said the karma has to end. Maybe a bigger punishment has been to a smaller punishment. But they are not content and they are not happy with the telling Krishna is not really helping us. So okay. we show the case how the Pandavas were suffering but still Krishna said but they are not able to wait. Krishna, Krishna is not very, very partial and all. They just keep arguing and so mm. They're not ready to do it. Yeah. Yeah. So if people feel that they are that God is not helping them, you know, when somebody feels like that, it's not so easy to respond to emotion with reason. Mm -hmm. So at that time, it is for us to as much as possible manifest God's love and care. We we don't go on defensive. Uh, I was once talking with someone about the similar issue. So mm -hmm. I, this was many years, maybe, maybe 15 years ago, I was quite new in Bhakti. Of course, I'm still new. But at that time, I was, I could say, very raw new. So I was trying to say, you know, oh, Krishna's plan is perfect and everything. And finally, he said, uh, that person was just, he said, you know, let's close the discussion. He says, throughout this discussion, I got only one feeling. You are not trying to help me. Your only purpose is to defend ah. your God. So, yeah. defend <laughs> your God. That is only your only purpose. Your purpose is not to help. Only. So, what we need to focus on is that, yes, this person is in distress. How can I be of service to this person? That say, If somebody is in great distress, that is not necessarily the time to try to defend God to them. There is a time for that also. But that is not the time necessarily. That is the time. So if somebody is in distress, we try to see how we can help them. Maybe we may not be able to help them. Just give them a just give them a hearing. Just be kind to them, be helpful to them. And yes, sometimes philosophy can be discussed, but there is a right time for discussing philosophy. So when Arjuna was furious after Abhimanyu was killed, and Arjuna was lashing out at everyone. At that time, Krishna did not speak philosophy at that time. You know, Krishna spoke something similar to, or rather what I spoke or something similar to what Krishna spoke. When Krishna and Arjuna was lashing out even at his brothers, he says, all of you, could none, not one of you save my brother, save my son? Now, are all your weapons just, <laughs> in, just ornaments, just bangles? So at that time, Krishna approached Arjuna, and just pulled him from the side and hugged him. He says, Krishna, Arjuna, in this world, adversities befall everyone. The wise people and the unwise people. The only, the, what differentiates the two is that amid adversities, the unwise people act in ways that make things worse. Whereas the wise people act in ways that make things better. Mm. He says, oh Arjuna, look at your brothers. They are grief struck. 
by the death of abhimanyu just as you are please don't speak words that will increase their pain so krishna arjuna was filled with emotions krishna approached him through the channel of emotions not through the channel of philosophy now that doesn't mean philosophy cannot be used the point is our purpose should be to help others krishna how can i help this person that can be our attitude over there and then at that time if they if they feel that we are being kind we are being supportive we are being helpful we are understanding how much difficulty they are going through so then then even if they don't get a philosophical explanation at that time that's okay so rather than saying that god is not helping me if they see that actually god's devotees are helping me so they may not make the connection immediately but they will make that connection eventually if we say if we don't help any person somebody is in grief and they say you know i don't have any time for you pray to krishna krishna will help you what will happen is oh yeah maybe it could be that, it could be that we don't have time at that time but either we make time or we connect yeah. with someone who has that time now most people will see god through the action of those who represent god so that is why it's mm. important for us to try to manifest krishna's help rather than trying to defend that krishna is helpful we manifest krishna's help in whatever way is possible for us and then at a later time when their emotion emotional temperature is a little lower then we can talk about philosophy and explain to them philosophically also okay Thank so you. we should show we should show that we are instruments of krishna and how we are trying to help them in that particular situation yes that is the focus thank you prabhu beautiful answer prabhu love is the uh, love is uh, all we need especially the near devotees they might not know etiquettes or whatever but if we show the love and uh, care towards them they certainly will understand thank you prabhu very beautiful answer yes uh, hari krishna mother gave thank you prabhu thank you sukadar krishna prabhu hari krishna prabhu um prabhu <laughs> yes um you had raised this question that you know the yamadutas had gone to yamaraj right and we heard the discussion that ensued but why why didn't the vishnu dutas go to vishnu so i mean i understand that if it, if it weren't for the discussion between the yamadutas and yamaraj we wouldn't have heard that wonderful philosophy but um i i didn't know if i heard the answer about why the vishnu dutas didn't go to vishnu okay so the point i was making is that vishnu that i said that yamadutas getting foiled getting thwarted is something which is extremely rare and that is what parikshit maharaj asked the question no this is astounding so please explain this and then in explaining this what shukde goswami did he describes the narrative between the vishnu dutas and the, uh, the discussion between the yamadutas and yamaraj that the vishnu dutas were successful well they represent the supreme lord vishnu they will be successful so there is no need to describe what happened to them thereafter so uh, so in terms of the extraordinary of the event the extraordinary was not that vishnu dutas were successful but the extraordinary thing was that the yamadutas were not successful so that is what need requires elaboration mm-hmm. that's what is elaborated mm-hmm. thereafter okay yeah and and just one comment was the 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 kind of popular saying that kept running through my mind during your whole lecture was that you know lemonade can always be made from lemons you know life can often you know yeah. hand us lemons yes. but our 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 duty is to make lemonade or or see how god is actually making lemonade of the yeah. lemons in life yeah. yeah unfortunately when life gives lemons people squeeze the lemon into everyone else's eyes <laughs> <laughs> true that true that thank you for uh, as usual another wonderful wonderful encouraging lecture hi krishna
yeah thank you mother gave thank you prabhu that was a new one but it is true <laughs> thank you so much hari krishna dilip gorangi mata ji and pranam hari krishna prabhu ji hari krishna yes um then pranam chaitanya chan prabhu ji thank you so much it was a wonderful class uh, my question is prabhu ji i really liked you said that it's not easy to respond emotion with a reason so sometimes in life uh, we do become emotional especially with our family and things like that and the people we care about but if they don't have time for us or they don't reciprocate then what is the way to detach i mean uh, obviously we have compassion for everyone we have feelings but what is the best way to detach for our own benefit to you know not get hurt or because if they can't give us time or if they they yeah. they they mean to but they can't then we need to move on right or is it because they don't want to they are saying they are busy because or maybe they want to distance from us so we don't know what is yeah that is true. actually happening yes just... what could it be prabhu ji is it uh, what is your thought that is it that when people don't respond is it because it is their way of distancing from us or are they genuinely busy <laughs> <laughs> okay so if somebody doesn't respond to us you know how do we how do we see do we just become attached from them or what what do we do well yeah you know, in all our relationships there is there is the there is a horizontal and there is a vertical that means that we are reciprocating with that person but we also understand that i am reciprocating with krishna through that person so if somebody is kind to us somebody is helpful to us somebody is loving towards us it is that person doing all those things to us but it is also krishna doing those things to uh, for us through that person and that means that say when a newborn baby is there the mother offers her breast milk to the baby there's practically no other act of such affectionate love where one life form is being sustained by the literally by the body of another life form but at the same time the mother doesn't do anything special to manufacture milk in her breast when the baby is born the same lord who sent a child through that womb through the mother's womb into the world also sent milk in her breast to nourish that child so it is the mother's love and it is also krishna's love manifesting through the mother and now normally both those can go together but there are times when the two don't go together when dhruva was insulted by his stepmother and was neglected by his father he came crying to his mother and his mother realized but i cannot help his mother said that you know lord vishnu can offer you more love than what millions of mothers like me can offer you take shelter of lord vishnu so in this case she herself told directly like that. Uh, but in some cases that may not happen so so we during different phases in our life it may be that the same person who was offering us guidance love warmth kindness wisdom shelter whatever it was that person may not be available later but that does not mean that we are we are lost or we are abandoned it means that krishna may offer us again by wisdom guidance love affection what a kindness through someone else so we need to we need to find out whenever possible we try to have honest communication that's why guhya makhyati prachati is important sometimes we may need to tell the person how important their association is in our life and then they may prioritize it uh, sometimes if you don't tell that then they may think okay Okay, I have many things to do, and this is not so important. But, they, uh, but sometimes it may be that they may be busy actually, and they may not have time. Sometimes they may themselves feel that you know maybe the relationship is not working out the way it should be. Maybe they are not able to guide us properly. So that does not mean that that they are rejecting us. But just different different devotees are different, and some relationships work out very well. Some relationships do not work out so well. 
that doesn't mean we have to break the relationship but sometimes a relationship may work best at a particular distance i was at one place i had two or two devotees who were very close friends and then they had a very bitter fight so then i was asking this devotee after or i met one of the devotees after many years i said see we are talking with this is how is your relationship with that devotee is wonderful so really how did it improve is this it's wonderful because we meet only once a year in mayapur festival <laughs> so he said when we are not stepping on each other's feet then we can have a good relationship so i'm not recommending that as a solution and the point i'm saying is at different phases in our life different relationships work best at different distances so we try to investigate and find out inquire rather and find out but if we can't find out then we understand that maybe you know krishna's law may not come to me through this channel it will come to me through some other channel and we try to find out from where we can we get krishna's law so in general we shouldn't overvalue the people who devalue us yeah and we need to start valuing the people who value us okay. yes prabhu ji yeah i had heard this also in one of your other classes that is true that is true but uh, how to deal sometimes prabhu ji with emotions how do i find that all of you are so wise all the devotees and all how where does this wisdom come from even though i am hearing so much uh every day all the classes and bhagavatam and reading and i try to share with small group also but when how like how to keep our emotions in check and how to Actually, how to it's not necessary that we have to keep our emotions in check so we, we may not always be able to change our emotions but we can change our focus emotions are sometimes like psych- just psychological reactions to life events it just like there are physical reactions to life events if the weather drops we feel cold now we can't suddenly stop feeling cold but we can choose not to focus so much on the cold okay i got some warm clothes and still it is cold it's not comfortable but i'm not going to think so much about it. let me do something else so we can't change the sensation of cold but we can change our focus and as we get busy in something else that cold then it won't trouble us so much so similarly we can't really change our emotions they will take their own time to change but we can change our focus so take up something responsible to do take up something which is challenging something which is inspiring something which is absorbing and as we give ourselves some other focus then those emotions may remain but those emotions won't trouble us so much no i have a seminar a course on growing through grief i had done this on the time of the pandemic when many many people lost their loved ones so is that you know when we lose someone that creates uh, a hole in the heart a wound in the heart now the wound may not decrease but our heart can increase that means that we may feel the absence of that person for a long time but we can feel the presence of some higher purpose in our life more and more so as our heart expands the wound may remain but the wound won't trouble us so much so we, we can't control our emotions much and trying to focus on controlling our emotions that doesn't mean we don't we don't is yes, get let ourselves swept away by emotions but we shift our focus away from our emotions to something else something which is important something which is absorbing and by that those emotions won't have so much control on us yes prabhu ji this is very very useful thank you so much for your compassion and taking time to answer my question thank you hari krishna thank you prabhu what a beautiful answer thank you so much um Yes, Anand Vilas. Yes, His Grace Anand Vilas Prabhu. Hare Krishna Prabhu, Dhanu Pranam. And I am. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Thank you very much, Prabhu. Um, Chaitanya Chaitanya Prabhu, you often speak very delicate points, very sophisticated philosophy, and do you deal with very intricate subject matters also? So, if I understand it, most of the time, which is possible, I understand it, but. 
most of the time it's i just say okay ye na ke na prakar ye na principle i apply if i understand i listen to you a lot i read i am a daily subscriber to you uh it is bhagavad gita as well so my question here is that you give the example of gps analogy right example of gps that everything is within the plan not the plan of the lord but within the plan of the lord so do we interfere sometimes or we mess up with these plans like that that's how i see it do most day to day dealing and day to day and part two is uh, i missed the point you said something about good intentions can blind us can you elaborate these two points please so oh. so the krishna plan can we mess it up well it's not so much we make we shouldn't think of krishna's plan like one pre pre packaged set if there is free will krishna has given us free will krishna has free will and krishna's plan in that sense is dynamic dynamic yes as i said if we take a wrong turn it will take us longer to get to the destination so our mistakes do have consequences but still it is not that any mistake is fatal we don't we are not thrown out of krishna's plan by any mistake no matter what wrong we think we may do krishna is not going to say that you did say a terrible thing i will no longer stay in your heart i am no longer the parmatma in your heart i leave your heart and go away krishna doesn't do that so there is there we don't have the power to do anything that will make krishna stop loving us because we are limited beings we don't have the power to stop the unlimited being from loving us that is the point of our mistakes so yes they can delay krishna's plan but they cannot thwart krishna's plan and as far as good intentions and good intentions the point i was making is sorry uh, that we may have a good intention but good intention alone is not necessarily a guarantor of good results we also have to use good intelligence when ajamil went to the forest he was went to good intention to collect firewood for his for his father's fire sacrifice but then he saw something over there and he got tempted he could have turned away from there he, he couldn't or he didn't whatever the intelligence was thwarted over there so good intelligence should not just sorry just because i have good intention does not mean that i can blind i i don't use my good intelligence we have to do both we have to have good intentions and we use our good intelligence then we will be able to work properly prabhupada always had good intentions he was always trying to share krishna bhakti but when he saw that things were not working in india he didn't say my intentions are good why things are not working out he uses good intelligence okay indians are being enamored by the west that's why they are not taking indian wisdom seriously so let me go to the west prabhupada uses good intelligence to come up come up with a new strategy that was the point as big okay right and is is like taking more accountability rather than that we we are part of uh, everything is within the plan so i i take i i account myself as more accountability like uh, how should i put it that i am accountable for my action actually because of my free will yes definitely we are accountable for our my, our actions also you could put it that it's bhakti means to offer everything that we have to krishna so our intentions are one thing we have but our intelligence is also another thing we have so if we have to offer our entire being to krishna if we are offering only our intentions but not our intelligence then we could say that is not full devotion so yes we can say take accountability means not just hold ourselves accountable but also we can say that we are are we offering our entire being to krishna so sometimes what you would say that oh i want to just surrender to krishna that means whatever i am told i'll do that well that is one conception of surrender but surrender can also mean that i'm really surrendering means i'm offering everything that i have to krishna if krishna has given me some abilities i need to use those abilities then only then i'm surrendering if somebody has some hidden treasure in their backyard and they say you know oh i'm giving as much charity i can oh you see you know this is this is this is, this is what is there in my uh, closet this is there in my treasury house and i give all but you have something in your backyard buried 
take the effort to dig your backyard, find out what is there and offer it to me. So similarly, we have intelligence which we don't developed. We may have talents which we have not developed. Surrender means to take responsibility, develop our intelligence, develop our talents, and then offer that to Krishna also. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Ananda Vilaspur. Uh, our senior devotees, Grace Baram Prasad Prabhu, Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Raj Prabhu, Dhanvat Pranam. Um, Hare Krishna, Dhanvat Pranam Prabhu, all glory to Srila Prabhupada, Chai Chaitanya Charitam Prabhu Ki Chai. Prabhuji, thank you so much for um, this class. So many points, as everybody said. Um, this is my question is similar to the the person who the Prabhu who asked just now, but a little different. Um, I like this point of within the GPS. It really stuck in my heart, saying that everything within Krishna's plan. That means even though if I make a mistake. Um, Krishna is merciful. It will take take me to a um, right route, even though it might be delayed. So that is definitely a hope. Thank you so much for that. Um, but my question in respect to this is, if something positive happens, we'll be jubilant. If something negative or grief or some things happen, people lose their faith. So I think this is a matter of a faith, uh, if I if I understand it correctly. Prabhupada tried many, many years in India, but he did not lose his heart because he had 100% faith, he has 100% faith in Krishna, that Krishna, this is, your hand is there, maybe you have some other plan. My faith is shaky. Right? I know I'm listening every day, I'm hearing every day. I am I'm, at least I'm getting to know that we should develop that faith. Uh, but still, faith is shaky sometimes. So, in that situation, how do I know that's Krishna's plan? It's me, you know, it's my mistake. Oh, it's happening to me. Again, it will come back, boils down to, oh, it's my karmic. Maybe my, my astrologer will help you. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, that's why. I just thought of asking you that. Thank you, Prabhu. Okay. So, if our faith is weak, and then we may think of other explanations for whatever is happening, my karma, my astrology, and other things, I don't think the two are necessarily related. See, first of all, if our faith is weak, it is weak. Krishna doesn't expect from us more faith than what we have. Krishna knows the level of faith that we have. It is not that a parent is going to expect from a kindergarten child to be able to solve a triple integral calculus sum. So yes, Krishna knows that this is the level of faith we have right now. And there are certain challenges which we face and they may damage our faith. They may even break our faith. But maybe through the damaging and breaking of our faith, we learn something and we grow. And so now, does having faith mean that everything is Krishna's plan, to think that everything is Krishna's plan? Well, yes and no. My understanding is the focus, our focus is not on what is Krishna's plan in terms of what is happening, but focus is what is, what, what is Krishna's plan for me? What should I do in this situation? Because every situation can be analyzed and explained at various levels. I suppose if I'm feeling cold, then uh, I could say, why am I feeling cold? Because I'm not wearing warm clothes. Oh, because the window over is not closed. Oh, because I have got fever. Oh, it's because, because this part of the world is very cold. Oh, it's because there's climate change. Oh, it's because this world is Dukkhale. Well, why am I feeling cold? All these explanations are valid. But which is the most pertinent, may be valid, all these explanations may be valid, but which is the most actionable explanation? If I am feeling cold, then people say, oh, the world is Dukkhale, so let me just tolerate the cold. Well, if I have some warm clothes, which I can make myself comfortable, and then I can focus on something else, then I don't have to go in that direction. So rather than worrying about, you know, whether a particular event happening to me is Krishna's plan or not, we can focus on 
in this, like what Krishna told Arjuna, that wise people act in ways that make things better. So in this situation, what can I do to make things better? Now we may say, I don't know what will make things better. Okay, but can I know at least in this situation, if I am sitting down and feeling just feeling sorry for myself, I'm just having a pity party. That is definitely not going to make things better. So let me do something positive right now. You just let me get out of my head and start doing some service. Start, you know, start extending a helping hand to someone else. Get out of my head. That will help. So just if we focus on that, that, that I am ultimately a servant of Krishna. I am meant to serve Krishna. So in this particular situation, how can I serve? Then just that having that attitude of service means we will stay within the plan of Krishna. Prabhupada says in our purport that a devotee may be perplexed, but a devotee is not discouraged. Discouraged means I just don't want to serve Krishna. I just don't want to do anything. Perplexed means I don't know what to do. So that perplexity can come in a devotee's life. But then a devotee uses one simple and tries to do something. Prabhupada writes in a letter to Sumti Moraji that when he was in America, he wrote that, you know, we are trying various experiments. I'm experimenting various with various things right now to see what will work with these Western people, with these American, with the American boys and girls. So Prabhupada is trying various things. So rather than thinking of whether the event happening to me is Krishna's plan or not, whether it is caused by my mistake or by my karma or by my astrology, whatever explanation we come up, we focus on whether my res- which is a response that will be most constructive, right? And then if we try to act, choose that response and service attitude, then we'll stay within Krishna's plan. So it's, a, it's our service attitude in the sense, now service attitude, we can say the very big thing. Service attitude, you can translate that into simply, say so Krishna is the well-wisher of everyone. Krishna wants the best for everyone. So if we try to make things better, then we are acting in a mood of service to Krishna. And then we are a part of Krishna's plan. So that's, if we just focus on that attitude, then yes, we will, we will stay as a part of Krishna's plan. Okay. So there's a last Thank question you. over here. So I'll, I'll Thank you. Bro. Okay. Jyoti Mata just typed a question here that. Thank you. Hmm. So sometimes we, if we are, if because of our mistakes, inabilities or our circumstances, we are not able to do a service. A time-bound service is it remains incomplete and we make offenses. We take too much time and we fail and we don't please. What do we do? What is Krishna teaching us through this? Well, if basically responsibility, we could say means if we take a service, we do it. And if we can't do it, then tell honestly that we can't do it. Then this, then our guides can give, give the service to somebody else. Sometimes what happens is that we equate responsibility only the first thing. I have been given a service, I must do it. Oh, but some, we are all we are all human beings. We have human limitations. And sometimes we just not be able to do a service. So being honest about it and being upfront, you know, this is my situation, these are my abilities, these are what I can't do. Just be, be upfront. Now, Bhaktisan Shakur, in their first meeting of Prabhupada, the instruction, you know, share Krishna Bhakti all over the world. Spread the message of Lord Chaitanya. And Prabhupada said that, you know, I, he Prabhupada said, I was married, I had a child. It could be unfair to my family if I just left everything. Prabhupada says, we may not neglect the instruction of the spiritual master, but we may suspend it at some times. So now, Prabhupada said that he did it eventually. But at that time, Prabhupada couldn't do it. But if something, something is time bound, you will tell the authorities. So, there's no need to uh, get into get lost in the complexity of our mind. And first, our mind feels bad that we can't do a service. Our first, our mind feels bad, you know, I've got so much things to do and on top of that, I've got a service. And the mind feels bad that, oh, I couldn't do the service. Then the mind feels bad because the devotees are feeling bad about us. Then the mind feels bad because we have been displeased devotees. So if they, we get caught in the mind. So rather than doing that, first we get angry and then we get angry that we got angry. First we get depressed and then we get depressed that we are depressed. So rather than we just clarify, just have clear communication and then move forward. So sometimes that's what is required to get ourselves out of our head. 
So, so when we are doing a surveys, we sometimes uh, try to surf this uh, that if we may do a surveys and we are not able to do it, but we don't admit it, is that pride? Well, rather than getting into the complexity of pride or humility, we can focus more on the principle that we are all parts of Krishna and Krishna has a part for us. But it's not that all parts are for us. So if the part we are doing is different from what or the part we have been given is different from the part we are able to do right now, then we acknowledge that. We acknowledge that and move ahead in our lives. I think let's not get too caught in the complexity of the mind. Just be straightforward. Do what we can and be candid about what we can't do. And if somebody always pushes us, you still have to do it, then try your best. And then if it doesn't work, we did our best and we can move forward in our life. So there is a time to think uh, and analyze our situation. And there's a time to not think because we may be overthinking things. So sometimes we just need to get out of our head and either do something or just say we can't do it and then move on with our life. <clears throat> So, if we try to make things better, but if devotees don't reciprocate in making them better, well, that is not our responsibility. We can't force others to reciprocate. We do our part, and if they, if then somebody else is not cooperating, then we move on with our life. And ultimately, it's uh, we can't control others' actions, and Krishna doesn't expect us to control others' actions. So, when we try to make situations better, does not mean that we will succeed in making situations better. But just that attempt to make situations better will actually keep our consciousness in a better place. Otherwise, we are complaining, oh, this is why is this happening and why is that happening? That is that will that will make us bitter. Just avoid that as much as we can. Okay. So thank you very much. Mantraj Srimad Bhagavatam ki. Shri Prabhupada ki.